Hi, this is Leonie from Spines and Splines. A couple of months ago I made a video covering a song called Art Bomb, and in this video I'm going to go into the art processes I used in a little more detail. I'll also be announcing a fun challenge and competition to win the artwork that I'm making here towards the end of the video, so keep watching to find out the details. The song I was covering in that original video was called Art Bomb, and it was for a song fight cover fight. Song Fight is a long-running songwriting challenge website, and the song that I chose from the archive was by a song fighter called Nivius. If you're interested in songwriting and song fight, check out the link in the description to this video. The lyrics to the Art Bomb song were about the Renaissance, and an art bomb is a term that refers to major shifts in perception resulting from art. The challenge for that project was to create a music video to go along with the cover song, so I decided to make my own version of an art bomb, which was a bit of a take on the Exquisite Corpse game, and I think of it as a visual form of the game Telephone. I started with a printout of the head of Venus from Botticelli's Birth of Venus painting. I wanted to see how far I could push that image using different printmaking methods. I chose the Venus image for a couple of reasons, one being that it's one of the most famous works from the Renaissance period, and the other being that one of my favourite projects given out by my art teacher in high school was to redraw the head of Venus, but change it somehow. It's an assignment that I've thought about a lot in the billion years or so since I finished high school, and the thinking behind it shaped my approach to making art quite a lot. A lot of the time when we make art, we're really focused on what it will look like at the end. And the premise of this project is to worry less about the end product and more about the process of creation, which in itself is a nice little nod to the themes of Botticelli's Birth of Venus painting. Back when I first started studying printmaking at university, I began making much better art when I deliberately stopped trying for a specific outcome and focused instead on setting up some ground rules for each artwork and just seeing what happened. I was getting frustrated with what I was making, so I took a step back and concentrated on the processes instead of the outcome. I almost immediately started making more interesting decisions and I wasn't left with that feeling of being disappointed by what I made because my skill set at the time didn't match my original vision. This exercise of art telephone is like an extreme version of that idea. The first step in my process was to make a paper cut from the printout of Venus's head. I used a flexible, very sharp scalpel blade and a cutting mat and I made all my decisions about what to cut away as I went. I knew that my next step would be to use this as a stencil for a screen print, which would then be used as a template for a woodcut print, and this knowledge played a part in the decisions that I made about where to cut. A misconception that a lot of people have is that you need a lot of high-tech equipment and materials to do a screen print. In reality, all you need to get started in screen printing is a screen, a squeegee, some ink and some paper. In fact, most of my favourite screen prints by other printmakers haven't used the ubiquitous and highly involved photographic screen emulsion techniques that most people associate screen printing with. Paper stencil screen printing is really accessible and you can make some very fun creative artwork with these super, super basic techniques. My first print here was pretty sloppy because my ink was a lot looser than I expected it to be and I used too much of it, but because I knew what I was printing would be cut away in the next step, I didn't get too hung up on it. You can screen print onto many different materials. The most common ones are paper and fabric, but here I've printed onto a piece of plywood, because my next step in this game of art telephone was to carve away the blue areas and print this as a woodcut.
This plywood is Japanese Sheena ply, which is a really high quality fine plywood used specifically for printmaking. But you can use any kind of plywood or wood that you can cut along the grain to make a woodcut. Some woods will print with more grain, which can look really interesting. So experiment with lots of different grades of wood to see what you like. To carve a woodcut block from plywood, the easiest method is to use a very sharp pointed knife to cut around the edge of the area that you want to cut away, then to carefully carve away the top layer of plywood in strips along the grain of the wood with a U-type carving tool. I do this in all the bigger areas, and then I go back around the edges with a small V-shaped carving tool to clean up any rough bits. If you're not using plywood, you just use a V-type tool for your carving. For all the smaller and more detailed parts of the image, I just used the V tool and carved carefully. A woodcut is a relief type print and it's one of the oldest methods of printmaking. It originated in China during the Han Dynasty and it's also one of the earliest forms of printmaking used in Japan and Europe. In relief printing, you carve away any area that you want as negative space, then when you roll out your ink it will stick to the areas that you left. When you make your print the image will be mirrored so you really have to think about back to front as well as positive and negative when you're planning your block. Printing in this way can be a bit of a mental leap if you're not used to it. This was definitely the stage of my project that took the longest time. I've obviously sped up the footage for this video, but carving away all this wood took several hours. I would have normally gone even slower and carved this more carefully, maybe over a day or two, but I had a pretty strict timeline for when the project had to be done, so I pushed myself to get it carved in a night. If you're giving woodcut printing a go for the first time, I would definitely recommend taking your time on the carving stage, being really careful with your tools so that you don't cut yourself, and taking lots of breaks so that you're not putting extra stress on your wrists and hands. While I'm finishing up my carving, it seems like a good time to remind you that I have a Patreon and you can go and support it. I've set up a bunch of goals there for both fun and practical things, like buying some technical equipment to help with the production of these videos, and every contribution helps, no matter how small. If you get some value out of what I make and you want to give me the equivalent of a cup of coffee each month, that would be brilliant. I've got a variety of reward levels set up, and at the higher levels, you get an original digital artwork to download and print every month. In January 2021, that digital image is this print, so head on over to Patreon and check it out. If you're watching this at any other time, or you just want to buy a print without subscribing to my Patreon, a reproduction of this artwork is also available to purchase on my Redbubble store, and I've included some links in the description. And don't forget to keep watching to the end of the video to find out how you can take part in an online art challenge and possibly win the original artwork that I'm making here. Heading back to the artwork, when I'm finished this carving I'll sand over it lightly with a piece of fine grit sandpaper to smooth out any rough edges and splinters of wood then I'll ink the wood block up with a roller. I used an oil-based relief ink on this block as I specifically needed to use an oil-based ink for the next step, but you can also print wood block prints with water-based inks and there are a lot of good quality brands available in a huge range of colours. I ink up my blocks by rolling out a very thin layer of ink onto a piece of scrap Perspex plastic and I roll that ink onto the wood block in several passes until there's enough ink built up to get a good print. It's better to roll your ink out thinly and gradually build it up than to add too much ink to your roller all at once, 
as it can be very easy to fill in fine details on your block if you go in with too much ink. Like I mentioned when doing my screen print earlier, you can print a wood block or a leaf print on many different surfaces as long as that surface is flat. The most common is paper but you can also print on fabric and I'll be printing on aluminium foil. I'm using an etching press to make my print but this is also an excellent printmaking method if you want to print by hand and I'll include links to some other videos I've made about relief printing if you want to learn how to do that. As I mentioned, I'm printing this wood block onto a piece of aluminium foil, as this project was the first time I've tried kitchen lithography. I learned the techniques for stone lithography from master printmaker Peter Lancaster back at uni, and it's absolutely one of my favourite printmaking methods of all time. Unfortunately, it's also one of the most difficult printmaking methods to do at home, because of the equipment and the tools that you need. A bunch of different people have come up with some alternative methods of printing this way though, using household materials, and this was my first time trying some of these methods out. Lithography is a planar graphic style of printmaking, which means that you print from a flat surface. When lithography was invented back in 1796, large flat slabs of limestone were used as the printing plate, and later on as technology advanced, aluminium and polymer plates replaced the stones in commercial presses. This type of printing can seem like absolute magic if you don't know what's happening. Basically, lithography is centred around the premise that water and oil don't mix. It's a printmaking process that is very suited to drawing techniques, and I started the process by degreasing my sheet of aluminium foil with some soy sauce, which removes all the oils from the surface. And then I printed my wood block carving directly onto the surface of the foil. I mucked around a bit with some citrus paint cleaner on my block after inking it up and before printing it to get some washy effects. And the oil based ink from my wood block will be transferred to my sheet of aluminium when I run it through the press. When the image from the wood block was transferred onto the foil, I drew on it a little bit more with some lithographic crayons and some old makeup. This whole process was a bit of trial and error. On my first couple of tries, I didn't degrease the foil properly and I failed at the inking stage as a result. And then when I finally figured it out and got it working properly, I tore my foil with a dried out mascara wand, but I persevered and got there in the end. When I was happy with the changes that I'd made to the image, I needed to process the whole sheet of foil to chemically alter the surface so that the positive part of the image would repel water and the negative part would attract it. In traditional lithography, you do this by treating your stone with a mixture of nitric acid and gum arabic, but obviously I don't have those things at home, so I treated my foil with a mixture of vinegar and a little maple syrup. I wiped this vinegar and syrup mix over the whole surface of the foil for about 7 minutes and then I cleaned it up with a little water and removed the entire image from the plate with some citrus based cleaner. The next step is what looks the most like magic and this is where the principle of oil and water not mixing comes into play. I inked up my roller with the same oil based printing ink that I used for my relief print. Then I used a clean kitchen sponge to wipe water all over my foil. I used a second clean sponge to wipe back the water to a thin film over the surface. And then I rolled my inked up brayer over the image until the image had enough ink to be printed. 
What's happening in this process is that treating the foil with the acidic vinegar has chemically altered the surface of the foil so that the areas that weren't protected by the oily drawing substances during processing attract the water that I'm wiping with the sponge and the oily ink only sticks to the parts of the foil where the drawing was. When I have enough ink on the image, I can put down a piece of smooth, soft printmaking paper on top and run it through my etching press to transfer the ink from the plate to the paper. I got about four prints from this piece of aluminium before the image started to degrade, so I need to do a little more experimenting to perfect this technique and soon I'll be making a video to go over it in detail. So make sure you hit the subscribe button if this is a technique that you're interested in learning more about. The final stage of my art telephone project was to hand colour the printed lithographic image with a watercolour. This doesn't need too much explanation, so now is the time to tell you about my challenge. I would love you to have your own go at the art telephone project. So if you start with the same image of Botticelli's Venus and process it through at least three different art making techniques, you can visit the link in the description to enter your project into the challenge. You don't have to use printmaking, and I'm looking forward to seeing how creative you can be with this idea. It's my birthday at the end of February, so make a video or share photographs of your work as you make it, then send me that link via the entry form on my website by Sunday the 28th February 2021, closing at 6pm UTC time. You'll be entered into the competition to win the artwork that I've made here in this video. This competition is open to everyone, no matter where you live and all the technical details and instructions will be included on the competition page that I've linked in the description. Depending on how many entries I get, I may have some different prizes as well, but we'll just see how that goes. Please share this video on the competition far and wide and get making. You've got about seven weeks if you're watching this video when it's released. Please like, subscribe, share and leave a comment if you enjoyed this video. All the materials that I used are listed in the description, along with links to my Patreon page, my website, my Facebook page, my Instagram, and some affiliate links to a couple of good art stores where you can buy materials. Thanks for watching. I can't wait to see what you make. Cheers.